on our way to the Hard Rock Cafe, where I'm going to be, let's call it the band middleman. I'm going to kind of make a video that informs a lot. A lot of you may know that I'm a teacher, but whenever I'm on a gig, I don't have a chance to explain anything to you guys. So I'm going to show you some of my personal tips, tricks, uh, things you might want to look out for if you're a sound man or if you're in a band that is running your own sound. We're going to see what is the standard for when bands go to that next level within the corporate world, all right? So I'll take you guys on the inside. I'm gonna make a more detailed video of stuff. Blah, 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 blah. First thing that should happen is you should be greeted by your sound man. The sound man should be the first person there. Organize your gig so that the sound man can be in there at least an hour before your musicians show up. That way, the stage is set up. The sound man is gonna come into the venue, pretty much decide what the layout of the room is gonna be, the load in. Load in time should be established between the band and the venue so that the sound man will have enough time to do a lot of logistics that a lot of people don't think about but becomes a headache. The house is the space that the audience is going to sit in. Remember, you're going into an audio engineer's house where there may be rules that you may not understand. Keep a level head and you will have a great time. It's Guru 3. You have to ring out the monitors. That's what he's doing right now is ringing them out. Putting the microphone in the worst case scenario to see what frequencies jump up. And as the frequencies jump up, he pulls them down in the EQ so that later on in the show, it still won't feed back. Worst case scenarios. He's re-EQing the room for a more R&B sound.